Hello, today we are covering the using corresponding parts of congruent triangles, extension to 4.5. You'll be able to prove that two corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the definition of congruent triangles is a review from about a week ago. Two triangles are congruent if and only if the six parts of one triangle are congruent to the six corresponding parts of the second triangle. Meaning that if we use one of our shortcuts, and prove that the triangles are congruent, we can use that to find any of the other corresponding parts to be congruent to another. So in that, we have if we can prove that two triangles are congruent using side, 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 angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or hypotenuse leg, then we can also know that the remaining corresponding parts are also congruent. So for these first two problems, we are going to state which two triangles are congruent and name the congruence theorem postulate you can use to prove the triangles are congruent. And then part B, list all other sets of corresponding parts that must be congruent because of that. So we need one thing before we can go ahead and state what it is. We need to know that that is reflexive there. So then we can use the side angle side because the angle is the included angle. We can use side angle side to state that triangle ETA, we have to be picky about this. So I went from E to T to A to state my triangle. So I went from the nothing angle over the first hash over the two hashes over the nothing. So be picky with the next one and say triangle M, T, A to match them up. Then, this is like the bell ringer we had a couple days ago. Where you were given that the triangles are congruent, you had to state all the congruent parts. So, state all the congruent parts, maybe draw them out. We have to state all the things in green, the other pieces that we hadn't written out yet. So AT must be congruent to AT, AE must be congruent to AM, angle M must be congruent to angle E, and angle TAE must be congruent to angle T-A-M. So before you had to name all six, because two are already there for us, we don't need to name those as other sets. We do the same thing here. Once again, we have reflexive, so draw it in. We need to use that to say that this is side, side, side. We have three pairs of congruent sides. And then we can name our congruent triangles, so triangle N, U, J must be congruent to triangle N, E, J. And then from here, we got to name three pairs of congruent angles in that reflexive side, N, J, congruent to N, J. So our three pairs of congruent angles, the easy one is angle U congruent to angle E. And the other two, we have to say this guy is congruent to this guy. So angle UJN has to be congruent to angle EJN. And then the other side, JNU must be congruent to NJNE. And we are good to go. So we're going to use that sort of idea to go ahead and do these proofs. First, before we do that though, when writing a two column proof, we will abbreviate the phrase corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent to the letter C, P, C, T, C. We covered that a couple weeks ago. So this just means once you prove that the triangles are congruent, the corresponding parts of those two triangles are also congruent. So let's try it. We are given Angle KBC is congruent to angle ACB, and angle K is congruent to angle A. That's our given statement. 
they de then tell us that BC is congruent to CB. We would usually say that BC is congruent to BC. That's fine. It's still the reflexive property. Right there. Now we actually already have enough to prove our triangles congruent. We have angle, angle, side, and angle, angle, side. So by the angle, angle, side postulate, congruence postulate, we can state that the triangles are congruent. On previous proofs, we would have been done right there. We just proved that the triangles are congruent. But these ones, we actually are asked to prove something different. We're proved, asked to prove that segment KB is congruent to AC. Now, because we know that the triangles are congruent, we know that corresponding parts of these triangles are congruent. So by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or CPCTC, we can prove that those two segments are congruent. Let's give you a second to take a look at that, and then we will move on. This next problem, we are given segments congruent A or A B to D A, C A to E A are congruent. That's given to us. This next step, they tell us the reason is vertical angles are congruent. We usually call this vertical angles theorem. If you see stuff like this, assume that you'll use vertical angles theorem. You can't just state angle A congruent to angle A. Angle A actually refers to four different angles, so you have to be specific. Angle C, A, B is congruent to angle E, A, D. That states these two angles, I'll change the color of them so you can see them better, are congruent to each other. And as you see, we are ready to prove our triangles congruent. We have side, angle side side, angle side. So SAS, side, angle, side, is how those triangles are congruent. Side, angle, side has that included angle between the two pairs of congruent segments. And then because our triangles are congruent, you can use CPCTC to prove any other pair of corresponding parts congruent. So angle C and angle E must be congruent because of it. And we're done. This next one, little trickier. We are given that M is the midpoint of BC. We are also given that AB is congruent to AC. So it's a little weird here to have the given split into two like that and not the first one and two. But it is totally valid to do that. They are marked out. If you are given the midpoint, assume that you are going to look at the segment, find the midpoint, and then you know the midpoint cuts the original segment into two congruent pieces. Write those down under the definition of midpoint. BM is congruent to segment MC. Then our next step is the other part of the given. We can use reflexive property for this shared segment. AM is congruent to AM for the reflexive property. And then we can prove our triangles congruent. We don't know anything about the angles, but we do know everything about the sides. So using side, 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 we can prove these congruent. And then we can state angles congruent we can state these two angles congruent, which is what it's asking us to prove here, using C, P, C, T, C. Notice these last two steps here. The second to last uses one of our side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, those types of things. And then the last one is using our proof statement and C, P, C, T, C on this kind of problem. And then lastly, we are given that angle RTS is congruent to angle RTL. That is given. And we are also given that TRS and TRL 
are right ang right triangle sorry which is also given that is down here so once again the given is split into two no big deal though when we see something congruent to itself take a look at the picture but it should be reflexive reflexive property it indeed is so i wrote it out we need to state one more thing before we can state the triangles are congruent and that is simply that right angles are congruent because they all have to be 90 degrees it's not 90 degrees and it's not a right angle and then we can state our triangles congruent angle side angle and angle side angle so by angle side angle that included side is between the two angles we can prove the triangles congruent and then from there it's pretty easy to just say that rs has to be congruent to rl because of c p c t c and we are good to go all right that's all i have for you